The economy of Thailand is often known for one thing, its tourism industry. It has been renowned as Asia's best destination. These paved the way for the entire service economy of Thailand to grow abundantly, affecting its financial retail and hospitality sectors. While tourism may play a huge part in Thailand's economy, it is in fact not the only industry that is performing well. In fact, Thailand has a huge and rapidly growing industrial sector. According to the Office of the National Economic and Social Development Council, before the COVID-19 pandemic, in 2019, tourism revenue had accumulated around 1.85 trillion baht, or around 50 billion US dollars. However, by 2022, tourism would generate no more than 13 billion dollars. This raises the underlying question, what is keeping the country's economy alive? Well, you have guessed it. It is due to the industrial sector. The importance of diversification in an economy has shed light on the world, as the need to have more than one source of energies for growth and stability is more crucial than ever. Nevertheless, while it did wake up the very governments of this world, Thailand has already diversified its economy a wide range of industries that we will be able to find out through its exports. The Southeast Asian nation is regarded as one of the world's largest manufacturing hubs. It has created and exported cars and its equipment, offices and other technological devices, but not limited to it as Thailand has also gained prominence from its exportation of precious stones and jewelry, which all have been impacted either by the country's proper governance or the country's abundances of natural resources. The entire bulk of its export sums to be about 271 billion US dollars as of the year 2021, as reported by the Ministry of Finances of Thailand. These huge exports have been one of the biggest economic drivers of the nation, one that triumphs the tourism sector, and one that has been unfazed by the economic crisis that we have experienced recently. What enabled Thailand, on the other hand, to become a nation that is embedded into the world economy is the demand of four partners, namely the United States, China, Japan, and its Southeast Asian neighbors. These countries and regional blocs are the biggest importers of Thailand products. In the first half of 2022, China imported approximately $18.4 billion, whereas the US imported close to $24 billion, Japan $12.7 billion, and the largest five economies of Southeast Asia at $27.6 billion. Thailand's emergence in the world economy and as a destination for massive exports have been impacted because of its ability to drive world-class and competitive products to the market. The automotive industry of Thailand has been well known across the region. It has consistently manufactured more than a million cars annually, and in 2018, it manufactured a record-breaking 2.1 million cars and exported 1.1 million. Likewise, they too are one of the largest exporters of agricultural-based products, cultivating the production of rice, sugarcane, palm oil, cassava, and many fruits that are richly favored across Southeast Asia. They are also one of the largest producers and exporters of electrical and electronic equipment. It is stated that this industry produces some of the best technological devices. These have then positioned Thailand to become one of Asia's best manufacturing hubs, which then impacts the export industry of Thailand. To quantify and see which are the biggest exports, we sought publicly available data from the Ministry of Commerce, and it shows that exports from the agricultural industry in 2021 resulted in $26.1 billion, and these are dominated by the rice and fruit products. Its agro-industrial exports, on the other hand, accounted for $19.1 billion, which are foods coming from preserved and canned goods. Mining and fuel products accounted for $10 billion, the rest of the remaining $271 billion? Well, it came from the manufacturing sector, representing $216 billion worth of exports. Electrical equipment resulted in $28.3 billion. Vehicles accounted for an even larger stake at $38.4 billion. These are obviously enough to say that Thailand's exports have truly helped drive most of the growth, not only today and during the economic crisis, but historically. 
as it is also documented that Thailand's export industry has continuously grown. In the year 2000, the country had just around $69 billion. By 2008, it grew to over $177 billion. And by 2018, $252 billion. The consistent growth should represent that the demand for Thailand products is increasing, as products are very reliant on their quality. It can also tell us that Thailand's overall value chain has significantly increased. It has upgraded its sectors and implored more investments into manufacturing-based factories to even staging strong foreign direct investments from international capital. Foreign investments also play a huge role. In fact, it plays one of the biggest roles in driving the entire manufacturing sector of Thailand. The Board of Investments reported that in 2021, it has gained $19.5 billion of investments, the largest of which went into electrical and electronic equipment, indicating that offshore companies are seeing a lot of opportunities in Thailand's manufacturing sector. A key milestone that can show us how Southeast Asia is slowly becoming extremely competitive around the world. And just like how Thailand is a massive exporter, they too are a massive importer. One of the questions often asked about imports is why does a country need to import overseas goods? Why not just make it inside? Well, it's because manufacturing is not a simple matter, especially in today's landscape. Manufacturing high-value goods such as semiconductors are still difficult to do in Thailand compared to assembling a car. Further, it can also cultivate every single fruit and vegetable on its own. It is likewise dependent on many factors such as weather. And lastly, Thailand does not possess every single natural resource. In order to manufacture, you will need a lot of raw materials and Thailand, even though it is a rich country in these materials, does not have everything. And so, in 2021, it imported $266 billion worth of goods, which is enough to give the country a positive trade balance since its export was $271 billion. Where these imports come from and what Thailand has bought off in that year differs largely from its exports. The biggest country that Thailand imports from is China, buying $103 billion worth of products, followed by the US at $56 billion. The biggest products, on the other hand, that Thailand imports are crude oil, chemicals, and machinery and its parts. The three are worth $60 billion. The importation of machinery is probably the most crucial because they allow some of Thailand's factories to function. Because if they want to manufacture high-tech products, they likewise need to have high-tech equipment. Now finally, how does this all contribute to the entire economy of Thailand? Well, more exports have always been attributed to economic growth. It after all produces employment, increases the aggregate demand, and creates new markets or expands existing ones. And it also shows that the economy is more diverse than most people think. Therefore, it brings us to the statement we said earlier on how Thailand was able to alleviate economic damages led by the COVID-19 pandemic, which closed down borders and destroyed the tourism industry. Furthermore, it also in part shows how Thailand has been steadily increasing its overall capabilities. Much of developing nations are still reliant on their natural resources. Thailand, however, was able to create a manufacturing industry. This will likewise impact the future of the country, because if a country relies too much on its natural resources, or say one industry such as tourism, when an impending crisis hits, it will hamper the economy by a lot. We have seen or may even see this happen in the future. What will happen if natural resources are now depleted or if we again see another health crisis? Thailand's economy, which it has diversified, has been built on futuristic demands and can be kept alleviated in times of disaster like these. But of course, these are all subjective to many opinions. Thailand is against the world when it comes to exporting its products. It needs to keep up its quality. It needs to keep luring in foreign investments. And it needs to balance all of these at the end of the day to ensure that reliance on one product will not pose a risk. But from the looks of it, the framework established by the government have all greatly helped the country to become where it is today. The country is amongst the best when it comes to doing business, which helps its manufacturing industries. Anyway, what do you think?